welcome to your class on mathematical tools today we are going to discuss a basic tool that we are going to use and come across a lot throughout our three year course in economics um, equations what are equations the definition would be an equation is a statement which says that two expressions are equal now these two statements or expressions are being separated by an equal to sign so here is an example 2x plus 5 equals to y so on the left hand side of the equal to sign is the expression 2x plus 5 this is called the lhs or the left hand side and on the right side of the equation referred to as the rhs or the right hand side is another expression which is y so this equation states that the value of the expression 2x plus 5 is equal to the value of y we can think of many more examples for example suppose i write 2x plus 5 equals to 9 as you can see here on the lhs you have one unknown variable which is x now look at another similar equation see a right 2x plus 5 is equal to y here you have two unknown variables one on the lhs two unknown values in the left hand side it is x and in the right hand side or rhs my values are y so in the second equation where i have two unknowns x and y notice that every time the value of x changes the value of y will also change so variables such as x and y whose values are constant are changing all the time are known as variables on the other hand values such as 9 on the rhs of equation 1 right hand side of equation 1 or 5 positive 5 on the left hand side of both these equations are known as constants this is because these values do not change similarly the first equation equation 1 is an equation in one unknown variable whereas equation 2 is an equation in two unknown variables now equations in one variable are also known as univariate equations you can have different types of univariate equations in fact a polynomial equation in one variable is an equation such as this as you can see this equation has more than one term in fact it has four terms but the variable that appears here is only x with different powers every time you come across a polynomial equation it is useful to know the degree of a polynomial equation now to find the degree of a polynomial equation just look at the highest power 
or exponent to which the variable is raised in this case x so as you can see in this example the degree is 4 let's take another example in this case as you can see the highest power to which x is raised is 7 so the degree of the equation will be 7 when the degree of the polynomial depending on the degree of the polynomial expression the expressions can be given different names remember when the degree of the polynomial exp expression is 1 the expression is also no called a linear expression example would be and so on when the degree of polynomial expression is 2 they are known as quadratic expressions when the degree of polynomial expression is 3 they are called cubic expressions in fact any degree greater than 1 are simply grouped together as polynomial expressions now it may be the case that you have expressions in more than one variable so if you have something of this sort as you can see we have two variables appearing over here x and y to find the degree of the equation just add up the exponents of all the variables in each term remember we have three terms here so adding up the exponents of the adding up the exponents of the two terms here we get 2 here it is 1 and over here it's 1 since the highest degree over here is 2 the entire expression will be classified as polynomial of degree 2 similarly something of this sort where we have three variables it's a polynomial expression of three variables x y and z again add up the exponents of all the variables you will get it as 4 7 putting it in brackets so that you're not confused and over here it is 5 once again since the highest degree over is of the middle expression that would be the degree of the entire polynomial expression which is 7 the logic remains the same if your degree of the equation is 1 it will be called a linear equation so if you have an equation such as 3x plus 4y plus 7z plus 9 equal to 0 this is an equation now because an equal to sign has come up since the power to which each variable is raised is 1 and the degree of each term is 1 the degree of this entire expression is 1 hence 
it will be called a linear equation in three variables now sometimes i might want to write certain equations in a general format for example say i want a linear equation in one variable a particular example would be 3x plus 5 is equal to 17 now if i want a general expression for a linear equation in one variable i could write it as ax plus b is equal to c so here the variable x the unknown value x continues to remain a variable however instead of constants 3 5 and 17 i am using the letters a b and c to denote some sort of constants which will appear to make this line so when you're using values such as a b and c to represent different values of the constants these a b and c are called parameters so i can define it as variables that are used to represent the constants in the equation now 3x plus 5 equal to 17 would be a particular example of this general expression i can make several more general expressions such as of the same uh, particular expressions by changing the values of a b and c so suppose i want to say 5x plus 15 is equal to 105 now this is again a particular form of the general expression ax plus b is equal to c where a has been given the value 5 b has been given the value 15 and c has been given the value 105 so when they do appear as numbers they represent a particular equation and 15 5 and 105 are referred to as constants but when i am looking for a general expression where the constants might change i can represent it using letters such as a b and c and they are called parameters so parameters are variables that behave like constants okay and also any constant that appears alongside or multiplied by a variable is can also be called as the coefficient so over here 5 can be the coefficient referred to as the coefficient of the variable x similarly if i have another general equation such as 7x square y plus 3y square is equal to 79 3 would be the coefficient of y square 7 is the coefficient of x square y and so on now in this class i will be expecting you to be able to solve linear equations in one variable so suppose you have 
a linear equation and one variable such as 5x minus 10 equals to 15. Finding the solution to this equation means find the value of x for which this equation is satisfied. The most commonly used method is to put all the terms with the unknown variable on one side of the equal to sign push all the other variables to the other side and solve for the unknown variable so over here I can write it as 5x is equal to 15 plus 10 here minus 10 goes is being pushed to the other side of the equal to sign so the negative 10 becomes positive 10 you've got 5x is equal to 25 and x will be equal to 25 divided by 5 remember over here the 5 is being multiplied with the x so when you shift it to the other side of the equal to sign it will be in form of a division so the value of x is 5 you can verify that you can verify your answer by plugging this value of 5 into the original equation in the left hand side so as you can see I've got 25 minus 10 which is equal to 15 which is also equal to the right hand side this verification is not required I just to be done uh, in the exams I just I'm doing it to show you and convince you let's try another sum Two x minus five plus x is equal to sixteen minus three x plus nine. Again, even though this is not in a very clean and general form, you can see that there is only one variable that is appearing everywhere, which is x, and you can see that the degree of the expression on both sides of the equation is 1 because the variable is only being raised to the power 1 so to solve this again the first step that you could probably do is you could open the brackets so 2x here when I'm opening the parenthesis on the left hand side since there's a negative sign outside the parenthesis uh, I will reverse the sign of each term so positive phi inside the bracket becomes negative phi when it comes outside plus x inside the brackets when it comes outside becomes minus x is equal to 16 again there's once again a minus sign outside the brackets so if I'm opening these brackets I should reverse the sign of all the terms coming inside so positive 3x becomes negative 3x and positive 9 becomes minus 9 now like I said uh, the general way of doing solving this is to group or bring all the terms containing x to one side so let us bring it to the left hand side you have 2x minus x and minus 3x from here when it comes to the left hand side of the equal to sign becomes positive pushing all the constants to the right hand side I have got 16 I have got minus 9 and minus 5 from the left hand side when it comes here becomes plus 5 so you have got 4x is equal to is equal to 12 which means x is equal to 12 divided by 4 
which is 3. You can always plug the value x equals to 3 into the equation on the left hand side as well as the right hand side and verify whether your answer is correct. If you do that, you will notice that both your LHS and your RHS is equal to the value of minus 2. Just try it. In addition to direct sol solving of um, linear equations in one variable, you can also expect application questions of this kind. So the question, this one I am going to solve as example. I uh, will give you a few more in the assignment that follows for the next class. So in this question, a firm manufactures a commodity at a cost of rupees 20 uh, sorry dollar 20 per unit in addition the firm has a fixed cost of dollar 2000 now each unit is sold at a price of 75 dollars the question is how many units must be sold to make a profit of 14500 so the first thing that you will have to do is to solve this is make the assumption that let Q be the number of units sold. We know that cost The total cost of producing Q units will be since one unit is being costs you $20 producing Q units will cost you 20 times Q dollars and the firm also has a fixed cost of dollar 2000 so 2000 should be added to get the total cost of producing Q units. Now if you sell these Q units, the total revenue that you get, revenue means the total money that you can make from selling a certain quantity. I hope you know that the total revenue will always be price times the quantity that is being sold now we have already assumed that the number of units being sold is Q we know that the price is dollar 75 so if I am selling seven Q units my total revenue will be 75 into Q now this question says asks you what is the value of Q if you have to make a profit of $14,500? So for this, you will need to remember a little bit of your economics, which is that profits, okay, I like to use the symbol pi for profits, will be your total revenue that you make from selling Q units minus the total costs of producing those Q units. So since our target profit is 14,500, our total revenue is 75Q minus my total costs is 20Q plus 2000. So here this entire question in words has been converted to a linear equation in one variable which is capital Q. Now remember I chose to capital Q as the variable if you are more comfortable with any other variable such as say x or even small q you can obviously use those as well just remain consistent if you're using small x then make sure that your total cost equation is 20x plus 2000 if you're using x remember that your total revenue will be 75x okay 
and your equation will be 14500 is equal to 75x minus 20x plus 2000 where 20x plus 2000 is inside brackets so moving on to solve this I can write this as 14500 is equal to 75q minus 20q I'm opening the brackets so all the terms inside the brackets the signs have to be reversed so positive 20q becomes minus 20q positive 2000 becomes minus 2000 so um, keeping all the q terms on the right hand side and taking the other terms to the left hand side I will get it as 14500 minus 2000 is equal to 75q minus 20q which is basically 55q so that can be written as 14500 minus 2000 is 12500 divided by 55 which is equal to very sorry there since minus 2000 comes to the other side it will become plus 2000 and over here um, it will be 14500 plus 2000 that is 16500 divided by 55 so that comes up to Three hundred units. You may also expect uh, word problems of this sort. So I'm going to solve this for you, and you can find other such questions in the assignment. Um, the question reads like this the sum of twice a number and five is equal to the difference of that number and three find the number so remember always take x to be the unknown value so let the number be x that's my first step now as you can see the sum of twice a number and five is the left hand side of the equation so twice the number is 2x and 5 it is a sum of 2x and 5 so use plus now it is equal to let's find what the RHS is difference of the number and x so then uh, and 3 so the number is 3 uh, sorry the number is x and the difference between x and 3 can be written as x minus 3 right so once again this entire line has been converted into one linear equation in one variable once you have got this equation correctly solution is simple take all the terms containing the variable to one side so you've got 2x minus x is equal to minus 3 minus 5 so here you've got x is equal to minus 8 now it is always nice to verify to ensure that you've got the correct answer so let's see is 2 times minus 8 plus 5 which is my LHS um, is minus 16 plus 5 which is equal to minus 11 now x minus 3 is my RHS and as you can see minus 8 minus 3 adds up to minus 11 so since LHS and RHS are same, I have solved this problem correctly.